With these new revelations about special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation coming to light, I spoke a short time ago with a Republican member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Susan Collins of Maine. She's also played a key role in building bipartisan agreement, which led to resolving the standoff over the government shutdown Monday night. We started with what these latest reports on Mueller say about the state of his investigation. It suggests to me that the special counsel's investigation is proceeding. Uh, usually the lower level witnesses are interviewed first and then the special counsel works his way up the chain, if you will, uh, to the most important figures. So it suggests to me that perhaps the investigation is nearing a conclusion in terms of the interviews. Well, meantime, I have to ask you about what's going on in the House. House Republicans on the Intelligence Committee are calling into question what's going on at the FBI, casting uh, their objectivity into question, uh, looking, calling for an investigation into missing text messages. Uh, are you supportive of what the House Republicans are doing? I don't think it's helpful to cast doubt on the investigations that are underway. Having said that, I share the concern about the six months of mix missing text messages between uh, the two FBI employees, which apparently contained political comments in the midst of the investigation that was done of Hillary Clinton's emails, and that is troubling that all of a sudden six months' worth of text messages have gone missing. I don't think that that's uh, a reason to cast doubt about the entire FBI, but it is sufficient reason for the inspector general to get involved and it's my understanding that inspector general horowitz has begun an investigation well let me turn you now senator to immigration you were a part of that bipartisan group that helped come up with uh, an agreement between republicans and democrats in the senate to get the government reopened uh, to come up with a plan to bring up immigration but here we are 24 hours later we're already hearing the president uh, tweeting that he's not sure there's going to be a deal. At the White House today, uh, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders was saying the president is going to insist on various things. Do you feel whatever deal there might have almost been is already coming apart? No, I really don't. You know, there's going to be a meeting tomorrow and a meeting the following day to talk about the specifics of an immigration uh, bill. And those are bipartisan meetings. And I believe that what we in the Senate have to do is our job. And our job is to concentrate on producing legislation. We know that we have a crisis as far as the dreamer population, which is protected under the Deferred Childhood Arrivals Program. Uh, being at risk of deportation after March 5th. I know of very few members of the Senate who want to see that happen because these are young people who are brought to this country through no decision of their own and they should not be living in fear. We also do need to strengthen border security. We know that there is a flood of drugs, particularly a potent kind of heroin, coming into this country from right. Mexico. And my state is one of those that's been afflicted by that crisis. Well, but almost everywhere you look, Senator, even if there is some kind of an agreement in the Senate, and we've had now Senator Schumer saying he withdraws the offer to fund the wall that he made to the president last week, but you look at the House, you have conservatives putting forward a list of demands today, a large group of conservatives saying uh, they are not going to go along with any kind of amnesty, that there has to be an end to chain migration. Then you have progressives, people supporting these young uh, DACA uh, immigrants, saying, no, it has to be in the exact opposite direction. No matter what the Senate does, this is still going to be very hard to do, isn't it? It is. I'm not minimizing how difficult the task before us is, but that doesn't mean that 
we should not proceed. And my belief is that if we can come up with a bill in the Senate that gets 60 votes, that it will give momentum for the House to act and for the President uh, to take a very close look at it. So that's my hope, and there are a lot of people who share that goal. Keep in mind that our Common Sense Coalition by Monday, but just yesterday, had 26 members of both parties right. who were committed to ending the shutdown and moving ahead on immigration. But, Senator, I mean, and just very quickly here, this is a tough, this is such a tough issue. On the one hand, you have people saying no amnesty, no path to citizenship under any circumstances. And on the other hand, people saying there must be a path to citizenship. How do you cut that down the middle? Well, it seems to me you distinguish between those who knowingly broke the law when they came here and their children who did not knowingly break the law. And in one of the bills that have been advanced, the, the way that the parents who did break the law would be treated is they would not be made citizens, but would be allowed to have renewable work permits to stay in this country, but would not ever be allowed to be citizens. That may not be the perfect answer, but there are a lot of different variations, and I think we can make those distinctions. And you've got all of 16 days to get it done. <laughs> Senator Susan Collins, thank you very much. Thank you.